Hello my friends, this is Ian and welcome to today's Inktober video. This is day three and the theme for this one was roasted. And my immediate thought went to a some kind of a lone wanderer out in the wilderness roasting some kind of an animal over a fire. Originally I was going to go with a cowboy roasting a pig over a fire and it just didn't seem to work in my mind. I didn't I wasn't happy with the image. So instead I went with one of my favorite themes being post-apocalyptic nightmare wasteland world. And because of this, I really wanted to make sure that the character was sat in a really dynamic pose and actually felt like it was sat in a 3D space. So I spent a long time working on the silhouette, slowly adjusting and experimenting with the silhouette until I found a position and the proportions that felt right in the pose that I was looking for. This actually took a lot longer than I would have liked, uh, especially with his right arm and left leg i was having real difficulty getting the the exact position and their proportions feeling correct always one looked longer than the other but eventually i managed to get his arm sitting in a nice position and his uh, his leg sitting in a nice position but once I finally had that, it didn't take long to start filling in some of the details around him and then move on to using my finer mechanical pencil to really start refining some of those features, especially around the face and any other thing else that I really wanted to draw the eye to around the fire, for example, and the creature which is roasting over the top of it. I also had a little bit of fun whilst creating the gun that he's got leaning up against the rocks behind him just by adding a few things to make it feel more fitting with the world post-apocalyptic. I find wrapping bandages around the gun or maybe not bandages but something looking like it's holding the gun together in some, in like it's been just falling apart and he's just tying it back together with whatever he can find and then odd little random sight bits on and around the barrel just to make it look a little bit kind of futuristic or something. His armor as well it was I, I was originally thinking of having him dressed in like pieces of old tire and things like that but it ended, ended up looking more like some kind of uh, a thin metal of some description so I just went with that. And as for the the creature that he's roasting I don't know what it is some kind of weird mutant rabbit thing that he's been out to hunt and that's all he's managed to find and now he's roasting it over the fire I I don't know what it is but uh, it's it's uh, a thing that'll do it's a thing I also gave the uh, the character goggles and uh, some kind of a breathing apparatus. I, I feel uh, both post-apocalyptic staples. You can't you can't survive in a post-apocalyptic world without goggles and some kind of breathing apparatus. I'm, I'm or mask. That's the other thing. I I, I guess some kind of a mask I could have given him. So like I say, the actual design work that went into this one took a lot longer than the previous ones. I think actually sketching out the idea but uh, finally after all of that I was able to move on to doing the inking which again I did it with my porcupine quill ink pen using a saji pen manga nib those are just the ones that I managed to find for the porcupine por porcupine porcupine quill ink pen maybe there's a reason that they don't make porcupine quills into ink pens or perhaps 
it's because porcupine quills are really really sharp and it would be really easy to stab yourself in the eyes so I wouldn't recommend making one out of a porcupine quill yourself although it is handy for stabbing into things like polystyrene to keep hold of it anyway I've never really had the chance before to use this pen as a tool to ink illustrations. I've used it before to write a few things, but never actually to ink an illustration. And now having had these three days of using it, it feels really good. Like, I, it feels like a really authentic, nice, nicely crafted pen, which is absurd considering it's a porcupine quill I found on the ground and uh, some super glue basically, but it feels like a substantial pen and the nib is really, really good. It's very scratchy, but I actually kind of like the way that it feels on the paper. I think I naturally draw in a fairly scratchy way. Certainly my sketching, I've always been quite scratchy in the way that I create an image. So I think maybe that's one of the reasons that it sits well with me is it kind of fits well with my natural style. So I'm, I'm happy to continue using it and I'm looking forward to seeing how practicing with it over the course of Inktober uh, improves my technique with it, I guess. I think there's probably a lot of things that I can do with it that I haven't yet found, let alone mastered. So uh, there's there's a lot of room for improvement and I'm, I'm really excited to see how, how my skills with it progress over the following month. Finally, I moved in with my Aquash pens and again used a watered down ink solution in the Aquash pen and then used the nib of the, or the brush on the pen to, to dip into the inkwell like I would a regular brush. Starting with a much lighter coat for the less intense shadowy areas and then moving on to using the much darker or more Di undiluted ink for the darker, deeper shadows. I realised because of the whole campfire scene and the way that I was lighting it as well, I was going to have to make it a nighttime scene, fairly obviously. So rather than just filling in the background with a straight up black, I went with having instead put down a wash of very diluted ink solution and then used a much more concentrated one for bringing in darker patches and allowing that to bleed into the wet areas of the paper to help create a cloud-like texture and really that dark areas I really intensified with the ink to make it feel like you were looking through the cloud and into the night sky behind or just seeing the very dark shadows from on the bottom sides of the clouds. The final thing came out so much better than the idea that I had originally planned. I'm really happy with the overall tone of the piece. It looks like it's a sellout of a graphic novel or something, which is great because I really wanted it to feel like it was telling some kind of a story. And I think I managed it. I think it really, really works well. If I went back and did it again, I think I'd add a few more things on the ground around him, maybe the the equipment that he'd used to prepare the animal and a few other things that he picked up along his wonders in the wasteland. I think possibly adding something further into the background as well, I don't know. Something just to hint at the type of the world that he's in, but I like the solitary feel of the picture that I've created and I wouldn't want to remove that or make it feel too busy by trying to bring in some kind of further deeper element in the background that might detract from what's going on in the foreground so I'm really happy with where it's at and I hope that you've enjoyed watching me put it together and I think that I'm probably coming towards the end of the video now I, there's about uh, maybe a minute or so left so for now I'm going to leave you with the end of it. Um, I hope you have enjoyed watching it guys. If you have then please make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't and as always take care and I will see you next time.